Hi guys, this is take two. I got disconnected. As you can see, I'm not at home. I am in Grand Cayman, I'm on vacation, and um, I got disconnected last time, so hopefully this time works. I'm Charlene Joint, and welcome to the morning after. So, I loved this episode. I thought it was really, really funny. I thought these were really, 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 really great. Worthy of the first week dates. If that makes any sense. Uh, we're gonna start with the Maltesers hashtag light goals moment and as a reminder light goals are a play on life goals but they're like somewhat more attainable. That said my <laughs> light goal this week is not super attainable but I still think it's it's now on my bucket list. I didn't know it was on my bucket list until I saw it but the demolition derby the, the, enti the entire group date, the concept of this. I had heard of a demolition derby. I didn't really know what it was exactly. Um, the fact that it exists is like crazy to me. And I actually Googled how to participate in a demolition derby. It turns out you have to find a derby near you, find a car, remove the glass from the car. There's all these steps. Can you imagine going on The Bachelor and just having cars there prepared for you and you get to decorate them? And you get to put polka dots on them and then, I don't know, hit each other with them. I just thought this was the coolest group date. Actually, my comment when we were watching was, this is one of the coolest group dates I've ever seen. And Andy said, this is by far the coolest group date I've ever seen. Or the coolest date, period, he'd ever seen. Um, and not all group dates are created equal. So uh, these women, I hope they realize how lucky they were because that's such a badass group date. Um, such a once in a lifetime experience and it kind of seemed like video gamey to me. So. It might not be the lightest of goals, but it is my Maltesers hashtag light goal of episode two. So I'm gonna go in chronological order, starting with Becca K's one-on-one. -on -one. And I've gotta say, as a fashion girl, I loved this day. I mean, meeting Rachel Zoe and she got basically an entire wardrobe. This was a really cool, really cool one-on-one -on -one date. Um, I like how Ari's kind of metro, like he's sort of, he definitely notices the fashion. He noticed last week when Annalise's necklace matched her eyes. Um, and, you know, oh, that dress brings out this whatever in your eyes. It's just, and he, he knew what Louboutins were. I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, I like how the conversations between these two um, feel really no like a normal first date. Um, it felt like something that, like about their lives and not about their connection, which can often happen on this show where it's like, well, yeah, we have a really great connection without actually getting to know each other. Um, and I partly think this is because Becca is obviously so good at asking questions, which is a big peeve of mine um, when people don't ask questions. This is on the show and in real life. So I, yeah, I appreciate that. And hi, MACD. Thank you for being up so early with me today. Um, by the way, Andy and I are going scuba diving in a little bit, which is why I'm so fresh-faced and in um, my bathing suit right now. Um, and then when Ari gives Becca the, her one-on-one -on -one rose, he said, I just want to know so much more about you. And I wrote, this is just the best compliment in the world. For someone to just tell you, I just want to know more about you. Because, you know, we meet people all the time and not necessarily care to know more about them. So I just thought this spoke volumes, that like he just wanted to know her more, more about her. Crystal gets the next one-on-one -on -one date, which is a bit of a curveball, because we're used to getting two group dates on week one. Um, definitely not the norm. Ari, I thought, I loved what Ari said to Crystal here when she had, you know, shown some insecurity about her upbringing and her family life and how it was just so different from Ari's. And he said that he chose her specifically because he saw his mom seeing Crystal as a light in this process, or just giving giving his mom some reassurance about the process by introducing him to Crystal. And I mean, what a compliment. Like, if that doesn't make her feel better, I don't know what will. Um, and I loved how he explained this. Like, not anyone could do this or could word it that way. A lot of people might be like, oh yeah, I just really thought you were cool and beautiful. I want, you know, I want to get to know you better. It's, he really said something that I thought was the ultimate compliment in relation to his mother. Like, I just thought that this was really powerful. Um, it wasn't just words I wrote. Um, and Crystal wrote, quote, I felt understood and listened to. He makes me feel safer and braver. I just loved the words on this date. There, there was a lot of specificity that can sometimes lack on this show. And so, yeah, I think Crystal's clearly a front runner. 
I talk about Crystal a lot, by the way, in my flare recap about the stealing and stealing time and blah, blah, blah. Um, I just really wish she hadn't done that, but I'll get to that in a bit. So the group day comes around and I mean, I wrote, wow, this is a cool day. <laughs> this, that was my notes. Um, and I just love how they get to design them. I just, I wrote also that this date seems expensive, which it does. Um, <laughs> about Annalise and her story about the, um, bumper cars. I felt for her here. Uh, they clearly were mocking her with the edit and the sort of flashback scene of bumper cars hitting some little girl and her face was blurred. Um, I felt for her. I, you know, we all have our like really weird fears and insecurities relate like that stem back from something that happened in our childhood that are just traumatizing and you can't really explain why. I certainly have mine. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, that said, for, you know, for those of you who thought she was being ridiculous, Andy thought she was being a little silly. So, you know, one of us agrees with you and <laughs> no matter what your thoughts on that are. Um, Chelsea showed her soft side in revealing she had a kid. Um, this is in the evening portion. And for you Canadians who watched Bachelor Canada with me, I wrote, oh my goodness, Ari is the opposite of Chris LaRue. <laughs> As we know, the one single mother on Chris's season got axed pretty soon after she revealed she was a mother, and this was after she'd gotten the first impression rose, when he didn't know she was a mother. I just can't help but see, um, I just don't think that's a coincidence, personally. And so I just, Ari clearly has no issue with, 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 so with single moms um, in the past and in the present, so I just, I thought that was really great. And yeah, I wrote the opposite of Chris LaRue. Um, and I wrote also, Sien's resume, oh my goodness, is she impressive. Um, but I think the most impressive part is how obviously humble she is. Like she delivered like the most like impressive um, history of her life without ever sounding like, oh yeah, and then I went to Yale and then I studied abroad. Like it was none of that. She was just, she was like, oh yeah, and then I did this. Like it was just so matter of fact. Ugh, I loved her. I loved her. She deserved that rose. Okay, rose ceremony. It's funny how in justifying her taking time that night, um, Crystal commiserates with Chelsea, but I thought it was like, of course, the one person who's going to agree with her. I thought this was really funny. Um, and also Crystal interrupting Bibiana. Um, this does not feel like a coincidence to me. I do not see it being possible that producers weren't like, oh yeah, you should go steal time, like right now, <laughs> you know, like, because Bibiana has her time. Like it just seemed too much of a coincidence. Um, I talk about that ad nauseum in my flare recap, so be sure to check that out. Um, okay. I have one question this week from Kayla. Tonight, I dropped two women from my pool, Annalise, bumper car trauma, and Crystal, stealing him twice. Am I being too harsh? Would Ari actually care about this step? Honestly, Kayla, I'm in complete agreement with you. Crystal would be higher in my top four if it weren't for the stealing thing, and I talk about that there. And I bumped Annalise completely for my top four because not so much the, the bumper car trauma, but more that, um, we didn't see her any one-on-one -on -one time between her and Ari on that group date, which is crucial. I mean, this would have been the first conversation after night one and we didn't, it wasn't even glossed over. We didn't see any of it. So, um, I don't, I don't think Annalise is going as far as I clearly thought she was because I had her at number one last week. Okay. So that, oh wait, I have one more thing to say, and this is about the Maltesers hashtag Rose Goals Challenge. You have to go to flare.com slash the morning after where, as you know, that's your bachelor hub, all things Bachelor live there, including my recaps, but you go there and predict who you think will advance to the next episode, and then you have chances to win weekly prizes, and a trip to Toronto, one of my favorite cities, so that's, I mean, you're already watching the show, so go to flare.com slash the morning after and predict who you think will advance, because it's like such a no-brainer, you can win prizes, do it. Um, okay, I am going scuba diving right now <laughs> and Grant came in thank you for tuning in be sure to read my flare recap and later this week my pretty pandas recap so many recaps and thank you for tuning in with me on the morning after and i will see you here next week bye